Welcome. Uh, today we will deal with the chapter 4 which talks about individual differences and work behavior. Now, the objectives of this chapter are to understand why individual differences are important and knowing individual differences influencing work behavior. Now, as far as understanding uh, why individual differences are important like the main point over here is that it is important for the managers to know about individual differences because individual differences have a direct influence on the employees behavior. People because of their individual differences view things differently and that is the perceive things di differently and according to their perception they try to behave also in different ways. Because of their individual differences people have different attitudes in the workplace their emotions are different and they because of these different attitudes they respond also to situations in different ways. The people with different personality pattern interact with their bosses, with their co-workers, with their subordinates in different ways. Due to individual differences people also accept change or do not accept change. Responsible factor is of course individual differences. Then individual differences also help to answer questions like why some people are more productive while they are closely supervised while others are not productive while they are closely supervised. And it also explains why some people learn new tasks in a better way than others do. So, we can understand one of the primary factors in understanding organizational behavior is the individual differences that people bring in when they come to the workplace. And it ranges from a whole range of the whole there is a whole range of factors and these are important issues and major concerns for the organization major things which organization should be careful about because one single prescription is not going to work for each and every individual and the organization has to recognize this difference amongst the individuals and treat them accordingly, deal with them, interact with them accordingly respecting these individual differences. Now, we will come to discuss the attraction, selection and attrition model which is called the AASA cycle. This was first discussed by Schneider in 1987, the attraction, selection and attrition model where it is told like the attributes of people, attributes of people are the major determining factors about the uh, these are these are the fundamental determinants of organizational behavior and not the nature of the external environment or technology or the structure of the organization because it is people who it because it is people who interpret all these things like what whatever is the signal from the environment or the technology or the structure ultimately it comes down to the people to interpret these facts and make meanings out of these facts. So, attribution of people is one of the major factors which is def defining the organizational behavior and in the attraction selection and attrition model we will try to see what how these individual differences affect this behavior. In attraction what happens attraction phase 
it, it is not that all people get attracted to all type of organizations or in the other way around organizations all types of organizations do not attract all type of people both ways. It is attraction occurs when there is a match of the personality pattern, values, ways of looking into things, belief system. So, attraction is a phase where organization tries to attract like minded people who believes in their values and the future prospects and all these things and organ and people also try to seek like minded organization where they will be happy to work in. So, that is the attraction phase based on that next phase is called the selection phase in selection phase what happens organization select people whom they think are compatible for many different kinds of jobs. It is not that everybody will be fit for all kinds of job. So, selection during the selection phase again there is a match uh, people go on for match making between the kinds of jobs available and like the people a group of people who are a proper match for performing the types of jobs which are there in the organization uh, match making regarding the competencies of the people and the requirements of the job or the role that the person is going to join in. Attrition is the just the opposite of attraction where people mm, do not fit the environment in which they are. Um, there is a mismatch between the environment and the people and um, they try to leave the organization and um, uh, what what is because they they were maybe there is a disturbance in the group because some people were there who were not matching the values of the group or the organization as such. So, when these people leave the people in a sense who are outliers to the group they leave what remain back is a very homogeneous group which matches which aligns with the purposes of the organization. And this whole phase is called the attraction selection and the attrition model. If you see like all these three phases of the attraction selection and the attrition model, each of these phases if you can understand is influenced by the individual differences of the of each of the person. Different people get attracted to the organize different organization based on their personal backgrounds, based on their career choices, based on their fun it is a function of their own abilities, interests and personalities. Organization also select different employees based on the needs of the organization for different skills, abilities and individual attributes like personalities and values. Attrition occurs when um, the they employees feel like whatever their personal um, preferences are, personal choices are or the personal makeup are is not is not matching with what the organization wants and they either they select to leave or the organization selects to terminate the employment relationship. So, these are the three phases and each of these phases we find individual differences play a major role in this three phases. Now, we come to discuss the individual differences in the workplace and we find like there are many factors which define individual differences. One of that is the demographic characteristics. These are the background characteristics that help to shape um, what a person becomes. 
important characteristics for the work demographic characteristics for the workplace are gender, age, ethnicity, uh, race and able bodiedness. When we talk of um, diversity factors like we, we have talked much about workforce diversity in the earlier sessions. When you talk of diversity factors, diversity factors we can just define it into two like primary diversity factors and uh, secondary diversity factors. Primary ones which are very stable in nature and they are age, gender, ethnicity, uh, physical attributes like affectional orientation etcetera. They are more or less stable in nature. When we are talking of secondary dimensions, these are changeable in nature which can, which are modifiable in nature and these are mainly the education, marital status, religious beliefs, health condition, work experience. These are secondary diversity factors, diversity dimensions because they are changeable in nature. So, we'll in this session we will deal with some of the diversity factors and individual difference factors and primary that we deal with is the aptitude and the ability. Aptitude is a person's capability of learning certain things. Um, ability is a person's existing capacity to perform various mental or physical tasks needed for a given job. It includes relevant knowledge and skills. So, if you can understand ability is a broader perspective, is it is a broader perspective, it is a general um, component of it is um, for performing various mental and physical tasks and aptitude is very specific to certain tasks. Like you have aptitude for music, you have aptitude for drawing, you have aptitude for sports, all this is. So, it is very task specific while we are talking, but while you are talking of ability, it is more of a general capacity in nature which is inherent capacity which is present to perform various mental and physical tasks needed for a job. And also it includes your relevant knowledge and skills. Intellectual ability that, that we are more concerned about is the when you talk of IQ, intellectual quotients, intellectual ability is the capacity to do mental activities. And uh, it consists of four sub parts cognitive, social, emotional and cultural intelligence. So, uh, a point of discussion over here is that like in generally sometimes we tell ok this person is more intelligent than the other and uh, other person and we try to make a very 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 sort of a generalized statement like ok you are more intelligent and that person is less intelligent and all these things which is somewhat a misrepresentation of facts because a person in being intelligent in one of the aspect or not being intelligent in one of the aspect of life does not mean that the person is not intelligent in other aspects of life because inter the concept of intelligence is not a single facet concept, but it is multi faceted and here that we see like we have four types of you know it consists of four sub parts like uh, cognitive intelligence, social intelligence, emotional intelligence and um, cultural intelligence. So, the intelligence of, pop, of of person in all these four sub parts may vary. Thurston classified your like the mental abilities into various groups and these are called groups of mental abilities and we find like there are groups like 
verbal factor V factor which tells about the comprehension of verbal relations, words and, words and ideas. Spatial factors involved in any task in which the subject manipulates an object imaginatively in space. Numerical factor ability to do numerical calculations rapidly and accurately. Memory factor involves the ability to memorize quickly. Word fluency factor involved whenever the subject is asked to think of isolated words at a rapid rate. Inductive reasoning factor the ability to draw inferences or conclusions on the basis of specific instances. Deductive reasoning factor is the ability to make use of generalized results. Perceptual factor is the ability to perceive objects accurately. Problem solving ability factor is the ability to solve problem with independent efforts. Now, if we just have a look into all these factors, uh, you will understand it is like not all types of jobs require all types of abilities from the person. Jobs also have uh, gr groupings of the different expertise in the different abilities that is required and accordingly while in the selection process we can map, we can choose employees who are having better abilities that are required by a specific kind of job. Next we come to Howard Gardner's work who tells about multiple intelligences like we discussed earlier like linguistic intelligence like the way of speaking like competence in language, logical mathematical intelligence, musical intelligence, bodily kinesthetic intelligence, spatial intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, naturalist intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence. Now, if you see all these intelligence, these requires different different mental abilities or groupings of mental abilities and it, it is possible that a person who is good at one is not good at the other um, intelligence. That does not mean that the person is not intelligent. So, he may be intelligent in one way and the other person may be intelligent in a different way. So, it, it lies, onus lies on the organization to discover wh what the employee is good at, what, what is the intelligence that the person excels in and try to match that person with the proper type of job. So, it is it's a major challenge for the organization to understand these individual differences, understand the potential of the employees and to like nurture them and to like map it properly with the jobs present. So, proper selection is very important in this regard. When we are talking of physical abilities, physical abilities or is it is the capacity to do tasks demanding stamina, dexterity, strength and similar characteristics. Nine physical abilities are strength factor, first is the dynamic which is the ability to exert muscle force repeatedly over time. Trunk, ability to exert muscular strength using the trunk muscles. Static, ability to exert force against external objects. Four, explosive, ability to expand the maximum amount of energy in one or a series of explosive acts. Flexibility factor, external ability to move the trunk and back muscles as far as possible. Dynamic ability to make rapid repeated flexing movements. Now, also 
these physical abilities can be mapped with the different types of jobs which are there and we, we can find out we can then while in the selection process if the job requires some specific type of physical ability then we can try to map the strength physical strength of the person the physical flexibility of the person the subgroups of the strength and the flexibility required for a particular type of job and map it with the particular person present and make a person better person job fit so while defining the the importance of individual differences and while we are discussing the abilities and strength factors and you know, flexibility factors in the physical abilities or in the mental abilities. One of the point of focus is of course, like defining the requirements of the job in a proper way, defining the nature of the job in a proper way also according to the abilities required for doing that particular type of job. Once that is done properly, then only we can utilize the individual differences, specific aspects of individual differences and map it to the proper kind of job. If the organization does not have a clear idea about what is required for performing a particular type of job then they do not know what type of person to select it for. Um, so, there could be a mismatch regarding this. So, the first purpose, the first task of for the organization is to define the job, describe the job elaborately, describe the role elaborately based on the what, what are the requirements from the particular employee in terms of the competencies, ability, skills, knowledge required and then only they can map it properly while it comes to the attraction and the selection process. Other factors present are of course, body coordination, ability to coordinate the simultaneous actions of different parts of the body balance, ability to maintain equilibrium despite forces, putting of balance, stamina, ability to continue maximum effort requiring prolonged efforts over time. So, these could be again some factors which are present and need to be assessed while selecting employees because some jobs require stamina, body coordination and balance and if, if you are not careful in the process of selection then later on we may have the employees may face problem and the organization may also face pro, may also face problem regarding the employees selected. Next important factor which leads to one of the important factors of individual differences is of course, the personality factor. So, Personality is a very unique nature of a person, which it is a combination of characteristics which defines the unique nature of a person and the way that person um, reacts to the environment and interacts with others. So, it, um, it combines a set of physical and mental characteristics and define how a person looks like, how he thinks and how he acts and how he feels. So, and it is a it is a stable state of feeling and behavior and, and which is guided by the genetic and the environmental factors. It is both situational and genetic in nature. Personality here at this point of time, uh, it, it, it will be better if you have uh, focus more into like the some some details about what is personality, and we'll try to look into like what personality is. The term personality is derived from the word persona, meaning mask, and. To the Romans, uh, Rom Roman people, it denoted um, one how they appear to others, not how one actually is. So, the 
popular non-scientific definition of personality, it focuses more on the manifest aspect of personality like how you are being viewed by others, not how you actually are and, and it is only the manifest aspect of the personality. Second, in emphasizing only the objective aspect, it, it is not focusing into the real personality or the interior organization which is responsible for the expressive behavior, expressive acts that is observed from outside. So, the popular non-scientific definition of personality, it depends more of the manifest aspect and also a general sometimes we tell um, it's very colloquial term like this person has a personality, that person has a personality and others do not have a personality which again is a not a proper way of mentioning the term because by virtue of being a person everybody has a personality. What, what matters, what differs is the personality pattern, the orientations. So, it is not that like one person has personality, other person does not have a personality. The nature of the personality, the orientations may vary, but each one of us by virtue of being a person, we do have a personality. And like if we come to the early psychological um, definitions of uh, personality, Woodworth in 1947, he defined personality as the quality of individual's total um, behavior like um, every field of um, life, how that person is behaving. Um, Dashiell in 1949, he told personality is the total picture of an individual's organized behavior, especially as it can be characterized by his fellow men in a consistent way. So, again if you see this is an observed part of behavior characterized by its fellow men and this definition is focusing on another important way, another important aspect that is the consistency of the behavior pattern. Mann in 1965, he told like personality is the most characteristic integration of an individual structures and activities. It is characteristics in dual, characteristic in dual sense. Um, first, it is it is a unique nature that differentiates one person from one individual from the others and um, also each person has a different personality pattern. The elements may be same, but the degrees of the, those elements present in different people may differ and it is fairly consistent like um, personality pattern is consistent over time. And so, it is representing the customary integration of a particular individual structures and activities. It, it tells about like how a person is and how he looks into thing, different things, how he behaves. So, it, when you know the personality pattern of an individual, we can interpret like how to interact with that person based on his specific nature of personality. Allport in 1961 gave a definition of personality which is widely accepted as the most comprehensive definition of personality and which focuses on the motivational aspects of personality. Mm, he defined uh, personality as the mm, dynamic organization within an individual of those psychophysical system 
that determine his characteristic behavior and thought. So, uh, if we just break this definition, if we just try to uh, stop in between this definition, we will find some important um, characteristics of what we mean by uh, personality. So, when you are talking of it is a dynamic organization means personality is a dynamic concept means there is a movement of forces within the individuals there are ripples within the individual. So, dynamic organizing it is not a very static concept, but it is dynamicity the forces are attraction and um, repulsive forces are there. Uh, so, dynamic organization within an individual. So, personality is develops from within it is not what others are observing, but it is an organization within that individual of those psychophysical system. So, it is both um, physical determinants are there, psychological determinants are there, we in individual differences we have just studied the physical determinants, differences in physical abilities, your strength factors and your flexibility factors. We have studied also the different types of mental abilities. So, personality is a dynamic organization within an individual of all these psychophysical systems. It is a mix of these um, different types of psychophysical systems that determine his um, characteristic behavior and uh, thought and so he, that all a mix of all these things his learnings from the environment his ways of perceiving the environment all these things make up a, develop a mix and find form a pattern of personality which determines his unique characteristic way of um, behavior and thought and um, interpreting the environment and interacting with other people. So, it is this personality acts as a motivator and acts as a guiding force for the person to behave in certain way to the environment and to other people. So, personality pattern it consists of uh, traits or specific qualities of behavior which characterize the individual's unique adjustment to life as shown in his um, thoughts and behavior. So, the word unique adjustment is very important and due to this unique adjustment to life there are so many individual differences between the people. Three major factor determining the personality pattern are one is the individual's hereditary endowment second is early experiences within the family and third is important events later in life outside the home environment. So, when we are talking of individuals um, hereditary environment this is due to some genetic factors that you, that determines the physical features your uh, physique of the person then your maybe the eye color hair color then your height weight maybe some some of the mental patterns also and early experiences with the family family interaction with parents interactions with your brothers sisters your 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 like uh, the rank order in the family rather like uh, do you are you the youngest one are you the first born uh, the your learnings from your family the manners that you learn from your family the uh, modes of life the cultural values that you are taught from your family what to do what not to do sort of the, the learnings that you receive from your family the environment that you 
uh, get from your family, whether it's a very encouraging environment, whether you get a positive feedback, whether you get unconditional love from your parents, whether you are encouraged to do certain things or not, all these small, small factors play a major role in your personality development. And the, also the relationship between maybe your parents and the atmosphere within, whether, whether there is you always face, face a threat in the environment or, or, or there is an atmosphere of peace and love, mutual understanding and affection um, and also positive discipline. All, all these plays an uh, important uh, role in the child development and also development of the personality of the child. Important events um, later in the um, after like in, in your school, the role models the, that you meet, the teachers that you meet, the peers that you meet and the learnings from them, um, how you match up with your try to find out the match between your family standards and your what learning from you get from your external environment, what selection you do, like what much, um, what is the amount that of that stimuli that you are going to assimilate within yourself, assimilate with your family learnings and what to reject and what part of family learning you need to modify so that you become um, part of the member of the external world. All these selections, processes um, will determine your personality pattern. And also then in school, college life and all these things. So accordingly, the determinants of personality are of course your physical determinants, your strength, your flexibility, your physique, your height, weight, all these factors. You, then your intellectual determinants, your mental abilities, your cognitive abilities, your thought processes, your social abilities and all the intellectual abilities in different different uh, sections that we have already um, seen. Next is of course your emotional determinants, the emotional atmosphere the, um, that you get in your home, the emotions that have been nurtured from your childhood whether these are primary emotions and secondary emotions positive emotions, negative emotions, what you have faced and what you have learnt in your childhood and in your growing years um, and the feedback that you have received for nurturing those emotions are important determinants. And next is of course your social determinants, your um, family background. Um, the nature of the family that you are in, your schooling, your friends, peer groups of course play a very important part, your teachers, role models in, in, in upcoming like when you go to your high schools and maybe enter your college. So, um, it helps to develop your um, personality pattern and bring some changes in your like the manifest way of behaving, if, if, even if it is like all these, uh, like the more you meet in the outer world and more you interact with the outer world, maybe there is uh, not, it is not like you cannot change to a very great extent, maybe the core of the person, but the, the grooming as far as the manifest aspect of the personality is there it can be done and certain changes can be brought out in this regard when like according and social determinants and try to like the acceptance that you get from your the cues that you get from your environment will help you to match up your personality pattern with the social determinants or receive the positive feedback and 
try to change yourself or not, whether to change or, or not to change, to what extent to change. These are important decisions to be taken, whether at all to change, not to change, which, which aspect to change. Uh, these are again questions to be answered before we go on for changing a personality pattern. Um, sort of why do we change, do we require to change? and to what extent these are important questions. Aspirations and achievements of people are also important determinants of uh, personality um, like what you want to do in your life, what, what do you aspire for, what achievements do you get, how many failures have you faced in your life, how do you, how do, how do you take, how do you take your failure, how do you, what do you learn from your failures. Um, is is always um, achieving the goal that you get is um, a good point or it's good to face failures also and when you face failures how do you take it how do you learn from it what do you learn from it and how 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 are you motivated to progress with that all these are um, like important uh, determinants of your personality and and people differ in these aspects and of course like we have already discussed the family determinants are very important because family is the major pillar of of your uh, life and you are born into a family whether you are born in a joint family whether you are born in a nuclear family, these different uh, family situations help you in developing uh, different personality pattern because um, you get different uh, feedbacks from your family. The ways in which uh, children are managed in a joint family or in a nuclear family it uh, differs and the importance that they get whether you are a single child or you have a brother sisters your whether whether you come from a, maybe a single parent home uh, or um, or both your parents are staying with you or or or, or whether the um, both the parents are working uh, um, whether mother is working, ma mother or not. So, whether you get a quantity time, whether you get a quality time from your parents, whether uh, what is the way that you've been brought up, whether you, you get gifts to compensate for the qual quality, quantity of time that your parents were not with you, and uh, or, or you spend quality time with your parents because working parents is is what the family structure, the both parents working is what what is the family structure that we are approach mainly are having today, and how how do we deal with our children, and uh, to compensate for the time that we are not with the, is it that we try sometimes try to or give give them things. Uh, just to compensate for the loss or, or we try to di over discipline them, we try to um, check them for every aspect like do this, do not do that sort of thing or whether grandparents are present at home or not or they are taken just in care of babysitters, all these small, small things, very small things um, are playing a major, um, does play rather a major role in determining the personality pattern of individuals and these learnings whether whether you teach your child to become independent from a very early stage in life or they develop as dependent personalities all these things are very important determinants the family mm, contribution towards developing the child's personality pattern is the values as we'll discuss next values of the children personal values the family plays a major role in developing the personality pattern and that personality pattern which is developed in the children sometimes becomes ingrained and that is what they carry forward in their life till their 
adulthood. So, it is very important factor in that regard. We move to values which is another important determinant of individual differences now. Uh, values are uh, stable beliefs are the broad preferences that people have about their um, appropriate courses of action to be taken and the outcomes preferred outcomes in life. So, it influences behavior and um, attitudes. So, sources of values could be your friends, could be your colleagues, could be your parents, could be your teachers, could be your um, role models. Um, could be external references group, but it defines a more stable state of mind and it, um, it, it, it is stable set of preferences may people that people may have. Perception, perception is one of the important defining individual difference factor. It tells about how people receive stimuli, organize the stimuli and translate and interpret the organized stimuli to influence the behavior and forming of attitudes. So, each person based on their abilities, their personalities, their values, their background factors, their gender, their ethnicity, their cultural diversity they try to, they tend to perceive different things, they tend to organize things differently and that mainly the organization and interpretation phase of perception, individual factors play a major role and then they try to interpret things and give these individual differences sometimes help to color perception in different ways for different different people attitude and attitude is a mental state of readiness learned through and organized through experience. It is exerting a specific response to people, objects and situations and with which it is related. So, attitudes are influenced by the values and how they are accurate and uh, attitudes are um, acquired from the same sources as the values. So, it attitude is a predisposition, attitude is a predisposition to act in a um, particular way. So, it, it, it tells you like um, whether you have a positive or a negative, it is a predetermined mindset that you have about whether you will respond positively or negatively to certain objects and uh, or something in your environment. So, it, uh, it, uh, it is a determinant of your behavior because it tells about the intention, attitudes or intention to act and in a certain way and it is linked with the perception, personality, your feelings, motivations and emotions. So, at, because attitudes are linked with all these individual differences factors and it defines your intention to act in certain way. Attitudes, taking care of attitudes is one of the primary um, major responsibilities that uh, are developing attitudes, changing of attitudes is one of the pr primary areas of concern for the practitioners in the or OB practitioners and um, um, organizations and its management like how to take care of the employees attitudes which are could be both positive in nature and could be negative in nature also. Able to discuss this when we are able to understand these individual differences each of these chapters each of these factors that we have defined here as a part of individual differences, we will try to elaborate on it on the next forthcoming chapters, next forthcoming discussions that we are having in organizational behavior like we will be discussing separately here on personality, we will be discussing a whole on the perception of the individuals, how these are formed, we will be discussing on the emotions and moods in the workplace. 
we will be discussing again on motivation and attributions and how, how each of these factors play a role in defining a person's behavior in the you know, workplace. And when if you remember the initial model that we discussed with if you the model of OB that we discussed in the first chapter, people come with these um, factors they enter the organization with these individual differences, then they come to interact with other people who have these personality factors, these perceptions, attributes, motivations and attention factors and all this. And when they find like there is a match with their own preferences, their own backgrounds with the people, other people that they meet, then they start communicating with each other they start sharing with each other about their own views, they try to exchange facts and as a result sharing takes place in the organization. The organizational behavior dynamics start in terms of the trust, build up, cooperation, conflict, whatever. If, if there is a mismatch of viewpoints, if there is a mismatch of personality patterns and all these things, then mm, there, there could be um, conflicting situations also. Individual differences are important to organizations from, uh, from the viewpoint of your like building up uh, teams. Now, it, it will depend on the um, organization to like how to utilize these individual uh, differences for team building. Do they want to make a um, homogeneous team where all people are of same nature with same ability or personality pattern, same motivational setup or um, same things attracting them or they want to make a very um, heterogeneous team where can each can each person can complement the um, other person's competencies and, um, and get the job done. Uh, it, individual differences will also influence like um, how to set the reward pattern and how to reinforce uh, people, um, big, how to motivate people because all all things do not motivate to certain extent all types of individuals because of their individual differences people like different things. So, we are discussing the change process also like people either accept change or they do not accept change based on their individual differences. So, um, again the psychological contract, the returns that the employees expect from the organization may also vary due to the individual differences. People according to their own set pattern of their preferences, their personalities, motivations, etc. may expect different different things from the organization and, and it is really very challenging task for the organization to um, develop a frame responses for it like how to answer to um, these challenges like psychological contracts and what what will what will rather be effective um, reinforcement for the people when it comes to motivation and so understanding individual differences, preferences, how to utilize it, how to channelize it, how to make it grow so that it gets tuned with the organization's purposes is a major work to be done and if done in a proper way may lead to proper, um, it is a better organizational um, performance. So, so it is very important to know and 
small small things about the individual differences. Now, again a policy a point a question may come like can we cater to the all the needs of all the employees like if there are thousands of employees with different different individuals um, individual differences then um, what an organization can do is it going to cater to the needs of each specific employees answers have to be sought out for this because can you do a grouping of people if possible with um, same similar patterns and uh, try to find out like if the, these are the things and these are the general trend of people of these, these categories or these these um, patterns then um, what what is the template of response that we have for these type of people so instead of just answering to the each of the individuals employees per se what we can give is a general mix of responses which is covering most of the needs of the of a similar types of um, employees while grouped according to their abilities needs personality patterns um, etc so these are different points of decisions to be taken by the organization but definitely focus on individual difference has to be there because you have to respect the organization has to recognize and it have to it has to respect like individuals are different and they have, each individual has to be treated differently and reasons of why a person behave maybe the outcome behavior may be same but the reason why a person what makes a person behave in certain way could be different this is more important while we are talking of uh, stress in the organization and conflicts in the organization and we are talking of emotionality in the organization we are talking of counseling and um, all these things because wh while you are taking some very strong decisions it may be required for sometimes to take some um, strong decisions about an employee who is not following the or who fails to follow the certain expectations of the organization before just arriving into a decision about that person it's it's very much necessary to focus into his way of looking into things the person's way of looking into things and trying to judge it from that person's perspective not the person not and not only from the perspective of the person who is making the decision because the why a person does certain things reasons his own reasons uh, could be um, entirely different from what we as decision makers sometimes feel that the reason could be because our thought we as individuals are different our cognitive processes are different ways of thinking as different personalities different motivation is different we are two separate individuals and we just cannot assume like that this person has done it because it is it is this way of doing things so in counseling processes also while dealing with the stress of the individuals in the organization while trying to motivate that person while trying to doing certain behavior modifications um, we have to be very very much careful about the individual differences individuals um, outlook of life individuals way of looking into things and we have to be very empathetic towards all these things and then take try to take and uh, try to rather find out a proper solution for the problem and you mainly maybe utilize that individual differences in a um, proper sense of the term there is sometimes 
um, because there is a heterogeneity, because there are differences, it uh, helps a lot in organizational uh, performance because we get a good mix of people and it, de it depends on the organization how efficiently we can utilize this better mix for better performance. Based on this, we come to the like some questions which is at the um, end of this session which is like define the ability, elaborate the different types of intellectual physical abilities and their implication for organizational performance, describe the uh, attraction selection and attrition cycle each phase of the cycle is significantly influenced by individual difference of each person justify with examples thank you